Besides traditional law enforcement duties and being the, the lawyer for all the state agencies of the Commonwealth, um, I also have a duty to uphold the laws of Virginia and the Virginia and U.S. constitutions. One of the ways I do that is pushing back on the federal government when it oversteps its proper constitutional boundaries. Federalism, I think of as vertical separation of powers between the federal government and the states for each to check the other. It's a two-way street. And we ought to know that in Virginia, the home of massive resistance 50 and 60 years ago, the federal government stepped in to protect the constitutional rights, 14th and 15th Amendment rights, of black citizens who, under the laws of Virginia, were being denied those rights. That's an, that's an federalism effort. Well, the time and the issues are different today, and now it's the states checking the federal government's power. States are pushing back because the people in those states have encouraged and picked elected officials who will do that. Um, and when we talk about pushing back, what we're talking about is defending the constitutional boundaries in our system. The most obvious example is the federal health care bill passed against the will of the people of uh, America. I am not aware of any other time in American history where over half of the states of the United States of America were suing their own federal government to protect the U.S. Constitution from the federal government. And that's what we're doing. Virginia was the first state to go to court. We were the first state to win a ruling that the individual mandate is unconstitutional in district court a year ago, December. Uh, our argument was, and the state's argument still is, that the federal government can't use the Commerce Clause, which allows it to regulate interstate commerce, to order you to buy a private product. And they have never before tried to do that, ever, under the guise of regulating commerce. This is what lawyers would call a case of first impression. There's never been one like it. And we go back to the founding period and we look at what was the problem they were trying to solve and what does it tell us about the application of the Commerce Clause today. But for 10 years we were boycotting British goods after the Stamp Act and the Townshend Act the Intolerable Act. That whole 10 years leading up to the war, boycotts were going on. And they were getting more and more effective. This was felt in Britain. At that time, the Attorney General for the King and the Solicitor General sat by tradition in Parliament. And they were asked if the boycott by the colonists was treason. And the answer was, they've come close, but stayed within the law. Now think about that for a minute. That was an acknowledgement that the government we rebelled against, by the government we rebelled against, that they could not order British subjects, not citizens, subjects to buy British goods. But we have a president who thinks he can. The federal government argues that your decision to do nothing, to not buy their Nancy approved health insurance to do nothing is economic activity <laughs> of all the founders to be appalled by all this I think Noah Webster is probably the top. <laughs> consistent with the what my solicitor general would call the postmodernist malarkey that most of the left engages in they see a restriction of the Constitution they don't like, and they decide it means something else. It's a lot easier than going through all the work of amending the Constitution. <laughs> what a bad. <laughs> so in the government's dictionary, inactivity is the same as activity, and they can regulate you for doing nothing. If the federal government crosses this line, make no mistake about it, they'll have an unlimited power to order you to do anything in the name of the public good. What, what the current majority in power says is the public good. That's why this case is not about health care. The legislation is about health care. The litigation is about liberty. And it is about preserving citizens' rights by states stepping forward and playing their role in the federalist system.